We continue today with chapter 26. Many forms, one correction. It is not difficult to understand the reasons why you do not ask the Holy Spirit to solve all problems for you. He has not greater difficulty in resolving some than others. Every problem is the same to him because each one is solved in just the same respect and through the same approach. The aspects that need solving do not change whatever form the problem seems to take. A problem can appear in many forms and it will do so while the problem lasts. It serves no purpose to attempt to solve it in a special form. It will recur and then recur again and yet again until it has been answered for all time and will not rise again in any form. And only then are you released from it. The Holy Spirit offers you release from every problem that you think you have. They are the same to Him because each one, regardless of the form it seems to take, is a demand that someone suffer loss and make a sacrifice that you might gain. And when the situation is worked out so no one loses, is the problem gone? because it was an error in perception that now has been corrected. One mistake is not more difficult for him to bring to truth than is another. For there is but one mistake, the whole idea that loss is possible and could result in gain for anyone. If this were true, then God would be unfair, sin would be possible, attack be justified, and vengeance fair. This one mistake, in any form, has one correction. There is no loss. To think there is, is a mistake. You have no problems, though you think you have. And yet you could not think so if you saw them vanish one by one, without regard to size, complexity, or place in time, or any attribute which you perceive that makes each one seem different from the rest. Think not the limits you impose on what you see can limit God in any way. The miracle of justice can correct all errors. Every problem is an error. It does injustice to the Son of God and therefore is not true. The Holy Spirit does not evaluate injustices as great or small or more or less. They have no properties to Him. They are mistakes from which the Son of God is suffering, but needlessly. And so he takes the thorns and nails away. He does not pause to judge whether the hurt be large or little. He makes but one judgment, that to hurt God's Son must be unfair, and therefore is not so. You who believe it is safe to give but some mistakes to be corrected while you keep the others to yourself. Remember this, justice is total. There is no such thing as partial justice. If the Son of God is guilty, then is he condemned, and he deserves no mercy from God of justice. But ask not God to punish him because you find him guilty and would have him die. God offers you the means to see his innocence, would it be fair to punish him because you will not look at what is there to see? Each time you keep a problem for yourself to solve or judge that it is one that has no resolution, you have made it great and passed the hope of healing. You deny the miracle of justice can be fair. If God is just, then can there be no problems that justice cannot solve? But you believe that some injustices are fair and good and necessary to preserve yourself. It is these problems that you think are great and cannot be resolved. For there are those you want to suffer loss, and no one whom you wish to be preserved from sacrifice entirely. Consider once again your special function. One is given you to see in him his perfect sinlessness. And you will ask no sacrifice of him, because you could not will he suffer loss. The miracle of justice you call forth will rest on you as surely as on him. 
nor will the Holy Spirit be content until it is received by everyone. For what you give to him is everyone's, and by your giving it, can he ensure that everyone receives it equally. Think then how great your own release will be when you are willing to receive correction for all your problems. You will not keep one for pain in any form you will not want. And you will see each little hurt resolved before the Holy Spirit's gentle sight. For all of them are little in His sight, and worth no more than just a tiny sigh before they disappear, to be forever undone and unremembered. What seemed once to be a special problem, a mistake without a remedy, or an affliction without a cure, has been transformed into a universal blessing. Sacrifice is gone, and in its place the love of God can be remembered and will shine away all memory of sacrifice and loss. God cannot be remembered until justice is loved instead of feared. He cannot be unjust to anyone or anything, because He knows that everything that is belongs to Him and will forever be as He created it. Nothing He loves but must be sinless and beyond attack. Your special function opens wide the door beyond which is the memory of His love kept perfectly intact and undefiled. And all you need to do is but to wish that heaven be given you instead of hell, and every bolt and barrier that seems to hold the door securely barred and locked will merely fall away and disappear. For it is not your Father's will that you should offer or receive less than He gave when He created you in perfect love. And from the workbook, Review Lessons 181-200 to 200. Introduction With this review we take but one idea each day and practice it as often as is possible. Besides the time you give morning and evening, which should not be less than 15 minutes, and the hourly remembrances you make throughout the day, use the idea as often as you can between them. Each of these ideas alone would be sufficient for salvation if it were learned truly. Each would be enough to give release to you and to the world from every form of bondage and invite the memory of God to come again. With this in mind, we start our practicing in which we carefully review the thoughts the Holy Spirit has bestowed on us in our last 20 lessons. Each contains the whole curriculum if understood, practiced, accepted, and applied to all the seeming happenings throughout the day. One is enough, but from that one there must be no exceptions made, and so we need to use them all and let them blend as one, as each contributes to the whole we learn. These practice sessions, like our last review, are centered round a central theme with which we start and end each lesson. It is this, I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. The day begins and ends with this. And we repeat it every time the hour strikes, or we remember, in between, we have a function that transcends the world we see. Beyond this, and a repetition of the special thought we practice for the day, no form of exercise is urged, except a deep relinquishment of everything that clutters up the mind and makes it deaf to reason, sanity, and simple truth. We will attempt to get beyond all words and special forms of practicing for this review. For we attempt, this time, to reach a quickened pace along a shorter path to the serenity and peace of God. We merely close our eyes and then forget all that we thought we knew and understood. 
For thus is freedom given us from all we did not know and failed to understand. There is but one exception to this lack of structuring. Permit no idle thought to go unchallenged. If you notice one, deny its hold and hasten to assure your mind that this is not what it would have. Then gently let the thought which you denied be given up in sure and quick exchange for the idea we practice for the day. When you are tempted, hasten to proclaim your freedom from temptation as you say, this thought I do not want. I choose instead, I am not a body, I am free. I am still as God created me. Repeating the idea for the day, let it take the place of what you thought. Beyond such special applications of each day's idea, we will add but a few formal expressions or specific thoughts to aid in practicing. Instead, we give these times of quiet to the teacher who instructs in quiet, speaks of peace, and gives our thoughts whatever meaning they may have. To him I offer this review for you. I place you in his charge, and let him teach you what to do, and say, and think, each time you learn to turn to him. He will not fail to be available to you, each time you call to him to help you. Let us offer him the whole review we now begin, and let us also not forget to whom it has been given, as we practice day by day, advancing toward the goal he set for us, allowing him to teach us how to go, and trusting him completely for the way each practice period can best become a loving gift of freedom to the world. Lesson 201 I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. I trust my brothers who are one with me. No one but is my brother. I am blessed with oneness with the universe and God, my Father, one Creator of the whole that is myself, forever one with me. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Amen.